Uh, good morning. Uh, what I would like to talk about is um, um, uh, for Fujitsu, um, what do we do with open source? Uh, and I think uh, at the same point in time, I would also educate here, you know, or share with you uh, our overall strategy, uh, what we are doing, and how open source fits in, in our overall business. So Fujitsu, you know, we are about a 30 to $35 billion revenue run rate, and, and I just want to say at the beginning, for us, open source becomes very important uh, because our ambitions are, um, you know, to compete at a, uh, at a very effective level at a global scale. And to do that, open source is, is key for us because we look at, I think I can proudly say, we have a leading position in Japan as the leading technology company, but that's not enough today. We gotta be leading company globally, uh, and when we see that, our competition really is across the Pacific, uh, and that means for us, uh, open source is a key a platform to equalize uh, what we wanna achieve in the technology field. So the five key areas of technology that we work in, uh, compute, um, AI, security, the, uh, converging technologies and network, uh, they all are very closely tied to open source. Um, why are these five key impo important for us? Because I think they f uh, lead to the Fujitsu's overall vision of being the DX partner of choice for our customers. And, and as at the heart of us, uh, of our company, we believe we are a technology company. What we build differentiates us from other companies. So uh, these are all the areas, uh, and, uh, uh, and you know, it, it does align for our overall perspective of, uh, from the business area of going from consulting all the way to hardware uh, that we sell across the world. Now, I'll, I will delve a bit into how we've looked at um, uh, contributing to open source. So uh, in the areas of compute, and I won't talk about um, quantum because I think that is probably a, a topic for another day where we believe we have definitely have a lot of leadership going on uh, and there's going to be some open source work in, in that area, progress. Uh, but in, in terms of processor work, um, we have been wedded to ARM for last 10 years. Uh, I think no, when nobody thought that you could build a supercomputer on ARM, we along with we can build the fastest supercomputer in the world. Fugaku, right? Um, and keep your eyes, uh, ears tuned. Uh, you will have the, probably the world's largest exascale machine that would be building, uh, again, based on ARM. So, um, so this, is, uh, uh, this is Monaka, and it has very close ties to open source. Second is our open source uh, uh, commitment to Fujitsu Kozuchi, which is our AI platform uh, that, that, uh, that we've been very pleased with in the momentum it's gained. Um, and I'll talk a bit about that. Um, the third is the Web3 acceleration pl platform, which is focused on our data and security a part of the research areas. Uh, and we've been working with uh, Jim and his team uh, for, uh, to, for uh, about leading the decentralized trust community here in Japan. And lastly is, um, this is very interesting, uh, as you pro progress from 5G to 6G, the work that you've uh, heard a lot about probably ION. So it's the disaggregated um, uh, photonic compute, right? where you bring um, the, the CPU and, uh, uh, and the rest of the compute together uh, and disaggregate that using the photonics um, uh, networks uh, to effectively uh, allocate the compute in a, in a most efficient way. Um, we announced this processor about, uh, uh, I think, three years ago. Um, this is a processor uh, which is a continuation of uh, what Fugaku was built on A64FX, but it's very different in a way that it is focused on data centers. And, and it, it is ARM-based. I won't go into the details of that. Um, it is a two nanometer processor. It will be the world's first two nanometer processor. Uh, uh, but again, focused on ARM, uh, very low power consumption, um, 144 cores, uh, dual sockets, right? Uh, now, Supermicro, about a month ago, Charles and myself announced they are going to ship uh, the Supermicro uh, ARM servers uh, based on Monaco when it comes out in, in two years from now. Now, the whole goal, while ARM plus open source, uh, is to progress for uh, what we aim at. Uh, you know, you see a lot of uh, power consumption in this space. 
Uh, and this is a processor that has a very clear goal of uh, uh, addressing that issue. Uh, and the whole software stack for Monaka that we are building, right? It's completely open source. So if I'll, I'll, I won't go into a lot of detail, but about three areas, right? Uh, if you look at the HPC uh, batch job-based uh, HPC cluster system, again, completely what we are looking at, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, very, its foundations are built on open source. There's nothing in Monaka that is proprietary software here. I think that's one of the key areas uh, that we believe adds value to it. Um, AI inference and AI model development platform. Again, a lot of uh, work um, uh, borrowing from open source, right, community, uh, as well as security. Now, the, this uh, processor has hardware security built into it. So, uh, so from a Japanese perspective, it's a very interesting processor because completely, I guess, the, the foundry is in Taiwan, DSMC. But beyond that, it's completely designed and built here, right? So it has a very interesting application for so government, defense, um, uh, next generation uh, compute that the government is properly planning, right? But if you look at all the different areas of parallelization, um, uh, analysis tools, framework, um, uh, you know, uh, the service development, it borrows heavily, heavily from, um, from the tools that are there in the open source community. Now, a uh, couple of areas. Now, we do a lot of this work. This is divided between our labs here in Japan and India. Um, the, the labs in India are focused on taking the software stack for uh, Monaka. A lot of it is Intel-based, so we've taken that stack and made it completely open back to the open source community uh, for ARM. Uh, so for one DAL, for example, right? Uh, we worked very closely with ARM uh, to have one DAL become a true multi-architecture software, and I, I encourage you to go and look into that, right? You heard about PyTorch, which is extremely important, right? Uh, for, for what we do in scalable vector engines. Um, uh, and, and this is something that uh, uh, for us becomes very, very important as we make Monaka more and more available to, to uh, you know, make it a, a processor that, that you would use on HPC and general purpose compute. Uh, finally, uh, you know, third area, but again, the whole stack that we've been looking on Monaka is open. Uh, it leverages uh, Llama's performance CPU um, uh, uh, and to us, it is optimizing what we see from a compute perspective for, uh, for, the, pro for the performance of this processor. Now, uh, I talked about a strategy. Now, that's on the, on the compute side. Um, and, uh, you know, five, 15 minutes are not enough to do justice to that. Now, I'll talk a bit about the software side, right, as well. So, um, so we, we basically uh, have been looking on, on uh, working on different areas of AI uh, and Kozuchi platform we released about a year and a half ago. Uh, but I'll just talk a bit about Gen AI. So we work with Cohere, which is founded by Aidan Gomez, uh, uh, who is one of the original uh, authors of the Google Transformer model, to uh, look at their uh, uh, models and port that to Japan. So Takane has, uh, which was what we released end of September, has, has the best performance in, in Japanese language today, right? Uh, and you can use it, you can uh, work on it. But some of the tools that we are working through on this, right? Uh, on root cause analysis, on generative AI, on the security frameworks uh, that we are building, uh, we borrow heavily, heavily from open source and, and uh, contribute back to, to that community. I think for us, we believe uh, uh, the open source is gonna be key. I think it's important for Japan, as, as Jim said, because uh, I think uh, this is a point in time um, where uh, uh, it's important for Japan to become, uh, to stake its leadership in the technology area, especially in the software area, uh, where I think, uh, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a gap, uh, and this is a good vehicle to, I mean, obviously, from our perspective, Fujitsu, it makes a lot of business sense to do that. As I mentioned, I think from technology perspective, we are very confident we lead in Japan, but that's not enough in today's world. Uh, and, and from that perspective, this becomes very important uh, if we want to compete globally. Um, again, uh, so we've been launching, working with uh, uh, the, the members below, you know, Honda, Toyota, Hitachi, uh, 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 Toshiba, and EC, uh, to launch the AI, uh, Linux Foundation AI community here. Um, but this is, uh, this is really looking at uh, introducing the OSS projects 
uh, in AI and uh, uh, you know, data and PyTorch, different areas. But more importantly, building the community. Uh, I think technical excellence of this is going to be key uh, as, as we go forward uh, uh, in this world today. Um, uh, another key area of uh, 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 this is something that uh, we, we probably feel we want to take the leadership here as well. Um, uh, obviously, we work with the Accenture to the Hyperledger Cacti model, which connects the secures the blockchain. Um, uh, and this is something that we've been participating pretty um, heavily for the last few years. Uh, so um, uh, from our perspective, I think Fujitsu will definitely be keen on uh, taking the leadership in, in this area uh, for the Japanese community here. Uh, uh, and move this forward for Web3. We see a lot of momentum here in, in this particular area. Um, you know, I just mentioned about that, right? Uh, so using OSS for co-creation in Web3, um, which is, uh, yeah, Japan has a lot of legacy IT systems, right? Uh, and the banks, the telcos, uh, they use it. So, so I think uh, blockchain is one of the key areas uh, that offers an avenue um, uh, to, to further uh, democratize that. Um, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to take time. But uh, I, I think uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is an area where the open source community can contribute heavily on this, right? Um, uh, a decentralized society using open source. And that, for, for Japan, is a, is a good equalizer. Is a, is a, is a good equalizer here. The, the last area I want to talk about is, um, uh, is the data-centric infrastructure, which is the photonic disaggregated machines, right? So, so you look at, um, uh, from, from us, uh, you know, and this is not something that we've just changed over last year because there's a big bandwagon on AI. I think three years ago we announced our strategy, and we've been pretty consistent about it. Uh, so you've got um, the software side of AI, you've got the compute, and you've got the network. These three areas need to all work in sync for AI to realize its full potential. You have the software, you have the compute, and, and you have the networks. So, so I think from our perspective, uh, we are working pretty closely in these three areas. Uh, and, and the last area that's why I want to talk about is, uh, is, the, is, the, is the photonic side of it, which is really all about networks, right? So you have massive data you know, going between the data centers within the data centers. Uh, and these fat pipes uh, would need uh, big and faster, bigger and faster networks. And that's the work that, uh, that we are focusing on in, in looking at the scarce resources, dynamically allocating that, uh, and allocating that to its full potential. An example uh, 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 you would see is uh, GPUs. So you pay 80, 90,000 for NVIDIA GPU. And, and if you notice its uh, usage, it's not 100%, it's far less than that. Uh, how do you maximize that usage? Um, how, using AI RAN, so you have a massive pool of GPUs, you can run different workloads at the same time. You need uh, very smart networks, very good networks to do that, and that's an area that we're focused on uh, from a data-centric perspective, right? So, so I talked about all uh, you know, three different areas. Um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, for us, I would reiterate, uh, if we, where we are headed globally, right? Uh, competing globally in, in a technology base, addressing the customers, uh, we see a lot of momentum um, for what we have to offer. Uh, I think we believe we are a very strong alternative to our customers, not just here in Japan, but in Europe, in Asia, as an alternative to what you have traditional-centric US technology companies, Fujitsu, which is alternative, and we're very excited about it, and, and they're partnering closer and closer with open source to realize, I think, to, to have Japan effectively be the leader in this space, uh, in the technology space, but also uh, makes a lot of business sense for Fujitsu. So I'll stop here, um, uh, and um, hopefully I've conveyed to you what, what we look at, our old stra overall strategy, where open source fits in, um, and looking forward to working closely with you in the future. Thank you.